Well, of course, I didn't plan to make this particular album my 100th album. It's an idea that's been in our minds for a couple of years now. And earlier this year, I went to Nashville and, and made the record. And suddenly, about two weeks or three weeks ago, I got this message saying that, did you realize that this could be your 100th album? Of course, I had no idea. And when the, when the story broke today, I, I still wasn't sh sure, you know, okay, I was excited by it, but would anybody else be excited? And it seems people are. So thank you very much for your excitement. And for me, it's going back to grassroots. The album is just full of iconic rock and roll songs. I loved singing it. I found myself in a, in a comfort zone because some of the more modern material is much more difficult to sing. And yet rock and roll is where it all started. So I was happy to be back there. I suppose people are excited, Cliff, because, you know, a 100th album in anyone's book is a remarkable achievement. And I'm just wondering what you hope it'll tell people about you as a performer today. What does the album say to people? Well, I mean, I think the album should say that, well, it'll say different things to different people. If you're of a certain age, it's going to take you back a long way. And as I say on my sleeve notes, this is not a competition. We're not in competition with the original iconic versions. It's a tribute to rock and roll and all that it's meant. So those people that know this stuff are going to go, oh, wow, I remember that song. Oh, what a great song. And I hope, of course, that they like my version. But if any young people hear it, they're going to get a shock, I think, to realize that this is where it all began. Everything that we listen to today is because rock and roll came and shook the world by the shoulders and said, we're here. And then things, of course, progressed over the years. Nothing stays still. And we've now reached where we've reached now. So I'm hoping that'll have all sorts of meanings to the different people. Just wondering about your approach and the style, given that you know, lots of these songs have been around for quite a while, and you'll have sung lots of them over the years. So what is your approach to performing them now? And how is that different to what it would have been, let's say, 30 or 40 years ago? Well, I'd like to think that after all these years, I've gained momentum in the way I perform. I personally feel when I listen to some of my old stuff, there was nothing wrong with it really, but I wasn't very adventurous. And if you listen to stuff like We Don't Talk Anymore and Devil Woman, I felt that I'd, I'd, I'd reached out and I'd gone in a different and a better direction. So what I can offer this album is me singing in the way that I sing now, music that was recorded way back then. And uh, as, I said in the, as I said earlier, it's not a competition with the original. The, you'll, never, you'll never beat the original because you can't get over the fact that original records have a memory factor and people will always want those records. But I think sometimes when you get an album like this together, every time I've played it, I've been in, I just got back from Portugal, I played it a lot in Portugal, it felt to me like a real happy party summer album. So I'm very thrilled with it. Interesting as well about the timing, Clev. I'm just wondering, could, could you share with us, you know, how far ahead are these in production? So, you know, this album's coming out in November, it's your 100th, as you say, that wasn't planned in that way. But how long does it take from the conception, from the original idea for an album like this, to getting it out? Well, it's, it's coming out on November the 11th. But I had the idea, or a group of us had this idea probably uh, 18 months ago, and then slowly got the songs together. That doesn't take much. It's just a matter of writing down your favorite songs, picking out, I picked 14 songs that I thought would be right for the album. and. Um, and then you go into the studio. Now we did this album. It took us two days to record. I sang live with the band and it took two days to do all the tracks. Um, I could have left my voice as it was, as I had sung it live, but I said to the producer, I'd like to have a go now by myself. Because now I've done it with the band, I helped them figure out what they're gonna do. I need to work on it myself. And I went in and spent another two or three days doing my vocals. And then, in fact, used many of the original. <laughs> but that's the quite, always the way it works. That's the way it works. So the whole thing was completed in about, if you count the mixing, probably um, four weeks. Four weeks. That's remarkable. And a quick question, Cliff. Which is the best track for you? Which is the track that gave you most pleasure? Oh, well, look, um, they, they all sound good to me, I have to say. The, there's two that really surprised me how good they came out. One is the old Brian Highland song, Sealed with a Kiss. And the other one is the one that, um, I'm not even sure my record company heard the original. It was a 1953 song by Johnny Ray and it was called 
such a night. And I love the way that came, that came out. That's, th those two are probably my favorites. But you know, you can't pick a favorite when you've got thousands of rock and roll songs to pick from. They're all fantastic. How could I not love? I did three Elvis Presley songs. Oh, this man gave me the inspiration. And uh, I, here I am before you because of him. If there was no Elvis, there'd be no Cliff Richard. Cliff, um, we wish you well with the album. Uh, great to talk to you, and thank you very much for talking to us on the programme today. Hugh, thank you very much indeed.